Hey, this is Adam Torres, and I'm here to tell you that it has never been easier to start your very own podcast. At Mission Matters, our goal is to amplify stories that matter. That means we want to help you start your podcast because your story matters. We can do this in three different ways. One, join our podcast school and take a free or paid course. Two, visit our resources page where we've already figured out what you need, such as where to host your podcast. Or three, heck, we can even do everything for you through our podcast agency, including editing for cheaper than you can do in-house. Oh, and no contracts, services month to month. Get started by heading over to missionmatters.com and click on Start a Podcast. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Marketing Podcast, your source for all things marketing. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Aaron Zach on the line. He's co-founder over at Revolving Mind Media. Aaron, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Adam. All right, Aaron, so uh, I'm excited to get into today's topic. So trends in branding and endorsement deals. You're the deal maker I want to talk about or talk to talk about this with, I should say. Um, but before we get into that, I do want to go a little bit further into what you're doing over at Revolving Mind Media. So tell us a little bit more about the company, please. 100%. So a little background at Revolving Mind Media. We launched approximately four years ago, and we are in the athlete space as well as business marketing. So Right now, 50% of our business is working with professional athletes on branding, um, endorsement deals, charity work, and the other 50% is working with businesses and brands, helping them be seen. So we've really built out our internal marketing team, um, and really anything on a digital presence um, is where we excel in. And with that, we do a lot of unique cross-marketing between the businesses and brand side of the agency and the athlete side. Um, that we've really focused on as well is expanding outside of just the NFL market. We've been 100% um, NFL up until a handful of months ago where we expanded into the NBA world, um, and we're excited about the growth that we've had over the past four years. Man, that's awesome. And, you know, at the end of this, I'm going to give you the opportunity to leave your website or social or wherever you want people to follow up so they can um, learn more with about you and your team. Um, I want to make sure the right types of uh, individuals and organizations connect. So what's typically a good fit for you in terms of clients? I would say approximately 75% of our business and brand side is small to mid-sized businesses that are trying to take that next step. Um, they might have a solid website, but they're not doing Google ads or they're not leveraging influencers in the marketplace. Uh, I like that personally because I grew up in the small business world in the retail space, and I'm able to show the small business owners a lot more than the Lyft Transportations and Toyota how much more revenue I'm bringing them. I'm a big numbers guy. And so I would say the small business area um, is where we are excelling in um, at an extremely rapid pace. Obviously, our athlete side is continually growing. It's all referral based on our athlete side. But on the business side, it's definitely about roughly 75% of our business. Um, and, you know, the scope of work that we're doing is everything from public relations to social media management to SEO and SEM work influencer marketing, really, again, the whole focus with our agency is turning revenue um, and showing that these businesses, if they're paying us $1,000, we're bringing them in three or four. Um, and that's kind of how we operate on a day-to-day -day basis. That's awesome. Um, well, that's a great transition, too. So let's, uh, let's dive into today's topic. So trends you're seeing in uh, branding and endorsement deals. I mean, you've, you've been in this business for a long time. I mean, where do you want to start with this one? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I got in the, in the business when I was 18, and I was an unpaid intern for two years. Everyone sees the luxury of getting involved in sports, and they watch sports, so they think they can work in sports, but um, it's a lot of grinding um, early on, um, and I worked my way up to becoming the youngest NFL agent in the business at 24, going on 25. Um, when we launched uh, Revolving My Media, uh, we didn't want to be a standard – agency that just focused on paid posts and that was it. Uh, the majority of our deals that we are doing on our athlete marketing and endorsement side are equity deals. 
and we really focus on athletes that truly believe in the business and brand. Um, if they don't, aren't going to utilize it on a day-to-day basis, it's just not going to work. Uh, so that's one area that instead of just a cash component for endorsement deals, a lot of our clients are wanting equity into businesses at a small equity stake to really help them grow. And, you know, as I mentioned, we work with a lot of small businesses, so they don't have tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars to lay out to athletes, but they want creative avenues. So we're doing equity deals. We're doing a percentage of sales generated through unique links. We're incorporating their charity. Of course, there is a, um, a pay for post component, but that is not the base of our agency. Um, and that's a really strong change um, in the industry. That was not a focus six, seven years ago um, when I was in the industry. It was let's bring in as much capital as possible um, and put as much money in these pockets, uh, athletes' pockets now. Um, and now we're really focused on that gener- generational long-term wealth. Uh, and that's how we truly believe uh, this is kind of the, the future. I'll give one real-life example on um, a recent uh, partnership. Uh, it was with Jalen Smith of the Dallas Cowboys and iCryo, which is the fastest cryotherapy business in the country. They have 80 sold locations around the country. And it was a very unique way of how our relationship built with iCryo, started with LinkedIn management, moved on to national public relations, introduced them to Jalen Smith of the Dallas Cowboys. And Jalen absolutely loved it, wanted to bring it to his hometown of Fort Wayne, Indiana. So we had a branding component of equity. We had an investment where he has to scale um, the cryotherapy businesses in the Midwest. And that's kind of how that um, partnership was able to be executed. There was a social media posting component to that. Um, But I figured a real-life example on how these equity deals are coming to fruition would be helpful. Man, I love it. And what I like about this most is that, you know, in the past, some of this was just, you know, just use the name, this, that, and, you know, and for some people that that worked, by the way. For some businesses, I'm not not down that model. It just wasn't authentic. yeah, and yeah, and, and people see through that now. Like it's not like nobody if they're not if you're not really part of it, like what he was doing and what I can tell is that he really believed in the brand. He wouldn't be going through all that extra trouble um to do to you know, to, to kind of be that involved with the business, the equity side, all these other things. Um if you're just looking for a check in to kind of move on to the next, right? Like it's not it's too much work, first of all. It's way too much work. <laughs> You're you're exactly right, and he lives and breathes cryotherapy. You know, a, a lot under a lot of your listeners will know about his injury uh, coming in his bowl game, right? That's what changed the uh, landscape mm-hmm. of a lot of star players sitting out bowl games. And he lives and breathes it. He's in he he does cryotherapy at least approximately five days a week, um, and it's authentic and real. And he doesn't have wow. to put hashtag ad at the end of his post where it seems just staged and paid. Um, it's a true partnership. Man, I love that. That's exciting. Um, so what do you see? I mean, because, again, you've been in the industry so long. What is the next, uh, and I'm not asking you to have your crystal ball, but kind of, what's the next evolution in this in this thing and how, how this, this part is going to work? Because a lot of ad dollars, a lot of company dollars are moving, especially from smaller companies, are going from, you know, um, directly to influencers and to these type of deals. And, you know, small companies are becoming big, um, let's say, possibly quicker and displacing or disrupting some of the uh, the incumbents um, faster lately, um, I'm noticing in certain sectors. So what do you see next? We're really focused on the tech space. Um, I attended CES the past couple of years just to try and be ahead of the curve on what's coming out in the tech industry. Um, I think that is definitely the future. And you kind of look at, you know, I, I look at the stock market on a day-to-day basis. And those businesses that are peaking from the Peloton to the Zooms, um, I see commercial real estate uh, not going away, but it's going to take a long time till people are going back into the WeWorks and shared workspaces. So I look at anything that I can be sitting at home and can be utilized. I think that's kind of the immediate focus. Um, so those are a couple of businesses that I focus on um, and I'm watching very, very closely. And obviously, if you if you follow the stock market over the past four or five months, those two businesses absolutely exploded. Um, and I don't see them going anywhere. Um, people are trying to get more creative. Um, but again, you know, in the in the tech space specifically, you know, from self-driving cars to um, right here in Dallas, in the Dallas Metroplex is where um, there's a 
there's uh, flying cars and helicopter pads that are being developed. So, uh, again, I've, I've worked with uh, the Lyft Transportations and Toyotas are a couple of businesses that I've executed partnerships with, but there's others in the space that are uh, taking that next, le- uh, next step in the tech space and uh, transportation industry. No, nah, totally. I, I like it. Um, can you talk on the importance of building a platform? And the reason why I think it's an interesting question for you is that you do it for business owners. You also do it for professional athletes. So I believe that both, yeah. both business owners and professional athletes have a lot of the same challenges. Like they, they do. It's not, it's not like it once was once upon a time where you're just on TV, everybody's watching the same TV. Even being a pro athlete on TV, there's so many TVs, they're competing for eyeballs too. So can you talk a little bit more about the importance of building a platform? Yeah, and and it's very interesting because I have this conversation with our clients, especially when they first enter the NFL. All day long. I figured you do it all day long. I knew you did. I feel it. (laughs) I'm going to give two examples. Um, The first one is Devontae Holloman. He was a six-round pick of the Cowboys in the mid, uh, I think it was 2013, and came into the league. Um, We sat down, and we were talking about all these big brands that he was interested in. You know, the, the hard part about the NFL is these guys are just not as recognizable. They're wearing a helmet. It's not like the NBA. Um, it's, it's a little harder to recognize these athletes. But, again, mm-hmm. when they have a star on their helmet, the brand and the value is there. And a lot of players think, oh, you know, I, I, I'm going to do this later on in my career, once I establish <laughs> myself. But the truth is, is the average playing career is only three and a half years. So when Devontae and I sat down and kind of mapped out, um, you know, what was the main focus, He was like, you know what, I'm going to come to rotary events with you. I'm going to come to networking events. He would pull his own business cards. He would send his own personal emails. And he had an awful injury. Yeah, his second year in the the league, he had an awful um, injury to his neck, was forced to retire. Well, he Mm. had an awesome baseline of an an amazing network, um, had job offers, ended up going to coach with Steve Spurrier at the time at South Carolina where he came out of. But that is the value in – at least the networking component in knowing the importance of the Cowboys brand um, and how to leverage that. Um, a second example um, is something that I'm going through right now. Um, I'm working with Anthony Brown of the Cowboys, and we're currently working on writing a children's book. He knows the power of his teammates right now from the Dak, the Zeke, the Amaris. He can leverage great relationships um, that he has, as well as the Cowboys organization and Charlotte Jones and Stephen Jones and that entire group. Um, Capturing that now as a 24-, 25-year-old is a hard mentality. You're focused on playing football. That's, that's what these, my clients have done their entire career. They are turning into full-on entrepreneurs. Um, they are involved in all conversations, um, wh- whether it's financial or putting the planning together on endorsement deals, because they're not going to be playing football forever. They're going to own their own businesses, and they need to ask their own questions. And, you know, Jalen, Anthony, they go into these, these uh, endorsement conversations, and they ask more questions than me. So they're closing the deal. It's really not me. Um, but I, I'm very, very particular with who I work with. Um, but, yes, leveraging the brand, um, whether it's Cowboys, NFL, NBA, it's so important, especially at the early stages of entering the career um, in the league. No, I love it. I, th- I think it's well said. And I love that you, you make the point that, you know, these athletes are professional athletes, are entrepreneurs. And they really, if you think about it, they always have been. I wish – I, and I'm not. We're, gonna, we're not going to make this political, but I wish they could start their entrepreneur um, entrepreneur career earlier. Like, let's say when they're in college, when they're already generating a ton of revenue for for other individuals. Right. But we're not going to get into this one because it's <laughs> politics, right? But it's it's crazy that that system still exists. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, but anyway, anyway, I'm not going to go off on that tangent. No. <laughs> um, hey, that's, hey, that's affecting the uh, NCA right now, as we're seeing all around the country. It's crazy. Still to this day, I'm like they're they're they are entrepreneurs, and if they were able to start that entrepreneurship like career earlier, then you know the, the, that three years in NFL or whatever else it is that could set them up for you know for some for some a good amount of time of their life and at least give them the skills, right? Um, I, I so completely no. agree. So this is awesome. This is awesome. So um, next step. So if somebody, Aaron, is listening to this and they want more information on Revolving My Media, whether they're obviously an athlete or in that side of things or business owners, um, which you mentioned you work with many different niches and sizes of businesses. I mean, what's the best way for them to reach out and to connect with you and your team? 
two avenues, revolvingmindmedia.com. Contact us. Um, the emails go directly to myself and uh, my other partner and at AaronZach21 on social media platforms. Um, happy to interact, happy to answer questions of individuals trying to either break into the um, sports arena or um, interested in just trying to grow their digital presence as a whole. But I, I think we could be talking for hours, so I might have to come on to your other podcast as well. I appreciate it, Adam. That's awesome. Well, Aaron, really appreciate you coming on the show today. It's been a pleasure. And uh, to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Marketing, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some links, um, some, some comments on the website. I'd love to know what kind of projects and things that you're, that you're working on. And Aaron, thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks, Adam. Talk to you soon. Have a great day.